Welcome to Statistics in Excel video number 45. Hey, if you want to download this workbook and follow along, click on my YouTube channel, then click on my College website link, and you can download the workbook, Business 210, Chapter 3. If you're in the class, just go to our Chapter 3 website. Hey, we just got done talking about Z, Z score. Remember, standard deviations above or below the mean. So you have you were 1.67 standard deviations above, and your sister was minus one standard deviations. Now we want to talk about a theorem and a rule, both having to do with distributions and uh, the proportion of values that lie between plus or minus one standard deviation or plus or minus two standard deviations. For this rule, we're going to do uh, plus or minus two, three, and four standard deviations. Actually, we'll be able to do it for any particular value. The, the difference between these, this one, uh, this rule here, this theorem here, is for data that has any shape. So the distribution can be any shape. This empirical rule, which we'll use a lot later in chapter six and forward, this is for a bell-shaped distribution. Now, I cannot pronounce this as Chebyshev's theorem. I just looked it up online, and I got all sorts of different pronunciations, even from Russians. But we do know uh, he was a Russian mathematician and uh, did all sorts of amazing things for math and statistics, and is considered the father of Russian mathematics. Ah, but this theorem, very powerful, allows us to make a statement about the proportion of data values that must lie within a specific number of standard deviations of the mean. Oh, that's exactly what we were talking about with our Z score in last video. For example, we could say something like, at least 82.6% of the students must have a test score between 58 and 82. That's a concluding statement we might be able to use uh, based on this theorem. Now here's the rule, at least, and this is our formula, 1 minus 1 divided by z, the number of standard deviations squared. So whatever that uh, that is there, we'll say at least this proportion of values in any data set will be within z standard deviations of the mean, where z is any value greater than 1. Now you can't plug a number between 0 and 1 into here, because if you plugged in like 0.25 or 0.5, 0.5 squared would be 0.25, 1 divided by 0.25 is 4, and you get 1 minus 4 is minus 3. As we'll learn in next chapter, chapter 4, you can't have probabilities or proportions that are uh, some other number bet besides between 0 and 1. So if you get a negative number, that wouldn't be correct at all. Now again, the real power of this theorem is that it applies to any data set, regardless of the shape. Empirical rule, only Bell. This theorem here, good for any data shape. Now here's something we can survive just as a general statement without doing this math formula here. 75%, at least 75% of the values will lie within plus or minus two standard deviations, 89 plus or minus three, at least 94 plus or minus four standard deviations. Now let's see a couple examples of how to apply this. Our first example, we have a test again, because we all can relate to the test, and there is the mean, and there's the standard deviations. Now, using this theorem right here, if we decide to calculate two standard deviations above and below this 75, we can then say something like 75% of the values lie between these two values. So let's calculate these two values. Equals, we're going to say our mean, and for the low end, we have to subtract standard deviation times 2. Now this one we can do in our head because these are nice, even, or odd uh, numbers by 5. So this one would be easy. Two standard deviation, that's 10. So 10 below 75 would be 65. Above would be our mean, and instead of subtracting, of course, we add standard deviation times uh, whatever number of standard deviations we want. So there it is. We have our two values, our bookends, and we can say at least 75% of the values lie between these two, and that's irregardless of the shape of the distribution. That's pretty powerful, because uh, later, even though this is an amazing uh, powerful rule and other related rules to the empirical rule, that's only bell shape. Not everything fits into a bell shape distribution. Now here we do the same thing for 3. 
there's our mean, plus or minus, because we're going to do the low end, standard deviation times 3. Well, that would be uh, 15, so we get 60. On the upper end, we could do this one in our head again, but it's always nice to have a formula when we get those ugly, messy decimals. And here we're going to add standard deviation times 3. At least 89% of the values lie between 60 and 90. Notice plus or minus 3 standard deviations. And finally, we could say something for 4. We have to calculate our low end. We'll subtract, whoops, if only I could type, whatever the standard deviation is times 4. So there's 4 of them. That will give us 55. And then on the upper end, we add a bunch of standard deviations. 4 standard deviations at uh, a width of 5 each. So then we say at least 94% of the values lie between those two. That's pretty helpful when we're talking about statistics and distributions. Now let's go down here. We'll blow this up a little bit and do uh, whoop. Now we're going to use our same uh, mean of 75 and standard deviation of 5. But here we're given two values. So here they are, test score of 67 and 83. And our job is to find out the proportion of values that lie between these two. So that means we have to calculate our z, because we have our values, uh, not our z. Like in the last one, we had standard deviation z equals 2. All right, so I'm going to highlight both these cells. And in this cell right here, we'll do our z calculation. Equal open parentheses, particular value, minus, and I'm going to have to scroll up a little bit. See if I can get this boop to fit on the screen. There we go. There's our mean, and I'm going to have to hit F4 to lock it. So that's our deviation, particular value minus mean. And then we're going to divide it by our standard deviation. And I'm going to hit the F4 key to lock that. And now I can Control Enter. All right, so there is um, minus 1 standard deviations below. 1.6 standard deviations above. So now we can calculate our proportion. Notice uh, this rule would give us, uh, it's always uh, this much above and below. Now we could do it, calculate uh, odd amounts here, but we're not going to do that. We're just picking two values and say between these two values lies this proportion. Equals, and we're going to do our rule, 1 minus 1 divided by, and our z, now we need our positive z here. So actually, we don't, because when you square it, it comes out, uh, either one comes out to be a positive number. Shift 6 and 2, that's square. Now notice also the order of operations. We don't need any parentheses here, because this minus, even though left to right it would be done first, forget it. Order of operations says exponent, then division, then subtraction, which is exactly what we want. At least 60.9% of the scores must be between 67 and 83. Now, one final application. You could just make a general statement. According to Chebyshev's theorem, at least what percent of any data set will be within 1.8 standard deviations of the mean? Hey, we just already have our uh, z score here. So we say equals 1 minus 1 divided by, and we have our z, or number of standard deviations above or below the mean, shift 6 for caret exponent 2. So we're squaring that. And then we can say, according to Pevchev's theorem, I wish I could pronounce that, at least 69.14% of the data of any data set will be within plus or minus 1.8 standard deviations of the mean. Now, when we come back in our next video, we'll talk about the empirical rule. All right, see you next video.